Hi, this is Mark and Lisa Manchester, and they um, have been working with Mark together. Mark was diagnosed with ALS in 2011. He was in a wheelchair by 2012. He had a peg tube by 2013, and by 14, he was dependent on the peg tube, the feeding tube. And then in early 15, he was trait. So from March 2015 uh, to sometime in 2018, he was pretty much, as you put it, in a vegetative state. You couldn't move, you couldn't speak, you couldn't breathe on your own, and you couldn't eat on your own. Is that correct, Mark? Well, I mean, I actually had surgery for the trachea in August of 2015. I was in a vegetative state even before the trach, uh, but I had a mask 24-7 uh, that I used. And you're right, it was about March of 2015. Uh, but it got to the point where my CO2 uh, was getting too high. So in the mask, well, they said the mask wasn't sufficient anymore. So August of 2015 is when... You know, we had to make the decision, and we were trached in 2000, August 15, 2015. Yes. Okay. And then you started taking this supplement, and you were doing a lot of other things as well. And today, uh, Mark is able to walk, speak, mm -hmm. breathe, eat on his own. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is his story. Uh, in 2010, uh, I played a, a lot of golf. So the first thing really – that I noticed it really wasn't me, it was my, my dad. He's like, uh, man, you must be getting old and weak because you're hitting the ball. I mean, I'm beginning to almost outdrive you when I used to kill him on the drive. And, and then I think that culminated to actually when I was swinging the club one time and actually the club flew out of my hand because I was having trouble with my left hand holding on to the club. And uh, so kind of, you know, I went to the doctor, thought I had a pinched nerve in my hand. He ruled that out. And that was in 2000, beginning of 2011. But this has been going on for five or six months. And uh, so uh, he referred me to a neurologist. And that was the beginning of EMGs and, you know, nerve conductions. And, uh, you know, I got an initial do diagnosis with ALS. or pro They called it probable ALS at that time. And then I went to three other doctors in the Final doctor I went to at Mayo Clinic, uh, on 7 7, July 7, 2011, which was my last uh, neurologist that I went to. He said, Mark, you definitely, it's a definite ALS, not probable. And he said, it's the upper and lower motor neurons involved. And at that time, just over that period of since I was swinging the golf club and having issues and falling off my horse and all kind of crazy things happening, uh, at that time, I'd already started with foot drop, and which was uh, within a month after being diagnosed, I was wearing AFOs. So, uh, and the progression was really rapid. I, I enrolled in a clinical trial uh, in Charlotte, Carolina Medical Center, uh, NPO1. Uh, after that was over, unfortunately, they didn't give compassionate use for medication. So, uh, you know, we just kind of, this was 2012, and um, we just kind of meandered, still trying to accept what was going on and trying to deal with the day-to-day -day things that were happening and trying to make sense of it and adapt as we went along. And uh, so I guess probably a year after that went by, uh, and I'll let Lisa discuss this more, uh, but a friend of ours that's uh, a naturopath doctor, doctor of nat naturopath, and she, she said, Mark, uh, Lisa, y'all need to really come to my office and so I can do a cradle, see what you need. Maybe you're missing some, you know, some nutrients that you need to, need to have. And, and we, I'd had numerous blood tests, and my magnesium was always wacko, magnesium, and I was having some liver issues because – you know, they put you on Ryutech or Ryazol. And uh, and then at that time, too, I'd also been diagnosed with pseudobulbar effects. I was on Nudexta and all the typical ALS medicines. But 
it was kind of overwhelming. And so what uh, uh, our naturopath decided is, is after she did the, the Zyto Cradle. And What's some the other Zyto classes, Cradle? What is that? Let's explain that. It's a cradle that's hooked up. It's a software that they use to um, basically test your um, energetics and what your body needs or what it's not getting. Um, and then she also does uh, saliva testing and hair analysis. hair analysis. And we have it shipped off. And then she just looked over everything to see where we were at and what, how we could implement and build a foundation of some good supplements for Mark to um, just start rebuilding and repairing his body, especially the gut. The gut gets beat up so bad on a daily basis for anyone. But the ALS, we have found that it just really, it, uh, it builds up a biofilm. I mean, everyone does, has a biofilm, but this, we were looking for something to just, you know, like when you're building a house to get a good foundation and then go from there to see what else and where else that we can go to um, see, to build his strength up, to see where we're at. Yeah, and the Zyto Cradle, she explained to me as an engineer, uh, I know Lisa gave a good explanation. She said, Mark, you're an engineer. It basically is measuring the conductivity in your body. So if you're low of essential nutrients, your conductivity will be less. And so, you know, and then it goes into the software, goes into a lot of different nutrients that you need. And, uh, and so that was the beginning of our, our, uh, I guess our supplemental or nutritional uh, program at least started. And we started off slow uh, as she suggested. And then, uh, you know, we ramped up to a, a handful of, twice a day of different kind of things that I needed, whether they were, as Lisa said, probiotics or because I didn't have a, I had my gallbladder removed years ago and I didn't realize that, you know, I needed some enzymes to digest my food properly. So I started taking digestive enzymes and probiotics and uh, omegas. omegas that my body was lacking. Uh, and greens. It's called vital. Chlor chlorophyll mm -hmm. to help my, you know, my blood actually oxygenate better. So I noticed a big difference after a few months. I mean, well, I say a big difference. I was still progressing, but I noticed a difference in, you know, my fingernails and hair and things that we'd normally do when you were, I'm not saying I was bound nutrition. I definitely wasn't, but I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the proper nutrition and things, but once they balanced it out, that was, it was a lot better. Yes. Okay, so when, when, when were you, when you were diagnosed in 2011, at one point did, were you pretty much confined to a wheelchair? Uh, about right before, right before Christmas of 2000, uh, uh, what was it? No, no. Wow. Yeah, right before Christmas of 2000, no, it was before that. Uh, probably the summer of 2012. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. I'm thinking 2011, but it was 2012. Uh, I started, I started wearing the, wearing the AFOs in 2011 and wore them uh, towards the end of 2011 and wore them up until the point where I just, you know, I was falling and tripping and uh, had a few crashes that I ended up in the hospital. So after they evaluated me, they're like, you know, Mark, you're a, you're a, you're a fall hazard. We really need you into the wheelchair. And uh, so they sized me out for that. And the ALS Association did loaned me one until my new uh, wheelchair came in. And from then on, I was bound to the wheelchair. It got to where I couldn't, you know, I, I could not stand. Right. And then what was the point, Lisa, when did he stop being able to transfer? Like, I know it's a big deal when you can transfer. When did you have to get the Hoya lift? Oh, wow. That's really pulling <laughs> some numbers out of my head. Um, 2014 into 2013 2014 is when I couldn't do uh what do you do like a slide board right oh, she uh, yeah it was probably it was 2014 2014 yeah. yeah I couldn't um he got his peg tube in 2013 right. and then I would say 2014 uh the other things were shifting to where it was getting more and more of the 24 7 and we implemented the Hoya lift. Um, yeah, as a safety precaution. Yeah. Because a lot of times she was trying to transfer me uh, by herself and using a, a slide board uh, to a transfer chair became unsafe. Mm -hmm. Right, and you're a pretty so, big guy, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm 
Yeah, yeah I'm you six can foot. only say scoot, scoot, scoot so much. Yeah, I can only. <laughs> she can only helping. pull me so much, and <laughs> right. and uh, but yeah, I'm six one and I weigh about two hundred and twenty five pounds. Mm-hmm. So I was a little bit smaller then, but not much. I did lose some weight after being diagnosed. It's pretty rapid weight loss, but with Lisa's help, she and the doctors insisted that she kept my weight up, mm-hmm. uh, which is difficult. I felt like I was eating too much, but. <laughs> So, Lisa, when did you start as far as um, th- this? When did you first see the naturopath? And when did you start looking at maybe we should change his nutrition? Uh, 2014, uh, the, the beginning of that 13. year of giving, starting with the oh, soul yeah. supplements. I mean, he was already uh, taking the supplements, but for to us to get a better guideline was probably 2014. Um, and then, you know, things were moving within that year of having to use the peg tube and trying to figure out a good, uh, balance of something else that what the doctors were wanting us to take from the hospital aspect. Uh, I would not go there. So we were looking into what would be more nutritionist, even though it was going to be out of our pocket Mm -hmm. until we finally found, uh, the supplements of for his formula of we went from liquid hope to Kate's farm. And also I still implemented um, pea based uh, protein through the soul naturals, the complete, because that also helps is has amino acids in it. And it it's uh, also helps with giving the nutrition for the gut healing process also. So it was a combination of what I was going to give him or gave him in his peg tube. Um, before that, we were trying to blend and do our own to, uh, you know, until he couldn't completely swallow and then tried to blend and see what we could shove down in the peg tube. And it just got a little bit overwhelming and ridiculous at times. Um, but we kind of made it work until we were on the right path, um, of the nutrition. So you never, um, used that standard formula that they try to give you no no because you have looked at the nutrition and said I well, don't know that. yeah I could, there was things on there I couldn't even read and if I couldn't read it I surely didn't want to drink it she would google it and she said <laughs> basically she said that what was it the uh, I don't know one of them she googled she says that's going to turn your stomach into like plaster of Paris that's going right. to turn your you're going to be, no, you're not going to take that. No. no, and especially when it's going in a peg tube, the damage it was going to be and will do to a peg tube also. Yeah. yeah. So we, anyway. we just opted to just keep searching and searching. That's the, the big whole picture of this journey, besides trying to survive it the best way we know how every day, 24-7, is just keep searching to see what else is out there, doing our own homework, doing our research, sharing with others. I'm really big on if someone calls me and asks me a question, I'm like, no question is a dumb question. Just ask me and I'll either have the answer or I'll try to find the answer or just, you know, someone else might know the answer if I don't have it because we don't know everything because this disease is so big. She had a great, she formed a great network during that time of other people that were going through different, uh, at different stages of the disease. One, some that we could help, she could help out and others that could help us out Mm -hmm. and had been like, no, no, don't take that. That's horrible for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do this, do that. And, you know, so I think it was a, 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 like a village. We had a a village of ALS people and we still have that. Lisa's still on the phone at least an hour a day talking to pals from all over the world, Uh, which, and I think you need that uh, to, you know, if you, if you, isolate yourself then you're going to just end up listening to what the i mean nothing against the doctors i've had some wonderful mds but you listen to everything they say and then most, where are you of them, at? most of them don't really think out the box they have a an als this is your regimented drugs that als patients take and uh you know we'll be here for you good luck kind of deal and so she didn't accept that she's like we're gonna do whatever you know, neither did I. I mean, we, we formed a couple of organizations th- during that time and and Never Surrender became our, our uh, motto. Uh, and that was Lisa's motto every day. We're not giving up and we're not giving up on the research. We're going to research something till we find something that's going to work. Or, you know. 
Always ask questions. Always asking questions. Yeah. And it's, it's the way that we've been able to move through this journey. And when people ask me, what do I do? I just tell them what I would do for us yeah. because I'm not one to go and tell someone else what to do because it may not work for them. It might not be their fit or their pattern that they can go down in that journey. But I would say, this is what I would do for us. You do your own homework and your own research. And this is what has helped. And this is what hasn't helped for us. And it, you just don't pinpoint and stay with one thing because there's so many ways to try to get around to work best for each person. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Patricia, she, she didn't want to come off as being, you know, this is the only way to do it. Mm -mm. Uh, this is the way we do it. Yeah. Now, you can do it the way we do it, but, you know, there's other ways to do it, but this is what we're doing. And she didn't want to, she didn't want to lead people, you know, she was leery about leading people to down the wrong path. I mean, with, I mean, she, because, because she, we were living it and we surely didn't want other people to, to, to get worse or whatever, you know, this, but this is what we were doing. It may or may not, you know, it may or may not work for you, but uh, she always led with that. I remember that. And she still does that today. Yeah. yeah. What I find is interesting is that Lisa, you saying in, in, instinctively and plus because of your education and background, you're saying, wait a minute, we don't want to put this in his stomach. I want to give him as much nutrition as possible. That's logical. And then on your side, Mark, even though you were getting worse, there was something there that you felt. You said your hair and nails were better. You kind right. of felt that it was helping, even though your ALS symptoms were getting worse. Right. So yeah. that, you know, a lot of people will give up at that point. We'll say, I'm getting worse. This isn't working. Right. So what was it inside of you that said, you know, I'm going to keep taking this. I'm going to continue to go the natural route. Well, you know, on just a quality of living, uh, even though I was getting worse, I actually had a little more energy, you know, I, I felt, uh, I hate to say, I mean, I mean, I had ALS, I was getting worse, but I felt healthier, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, well, that's a big, that's a big deal. I, you're I feeling I felt, better. I felt I was getting better nutrition, where I was losing weight pretty fast before. I was maintaining and actually gaining weight. So, and it was all with good stuff. So, um, you know, I had muscles, I had PTs, OTs, all these people coming in and out, and they were, they were even amazed at, wow, how often do you cut your hair? And Lisa's like, oh, bi-weekly. <laughs> That's how fast my hair was growing. So that told me that my body was responding very positively to what she was giving me. Yeah, maybe not helping with the ALS, but, you know, overall, I was healthier. You know, my digestive system was healthier, which is where the she started from the, the root. That was the base, is trying to heal my gut. And, uh Okay, so let's. So this went on. You you went on a peg uh, originally in thirteen, but then you were pretty dependent on it by fourteen. Yes. Okay, so so this is three years after diagnosis. You're dependent on a peg tube. You can't really swallow on your own at this point. Um, you're in a wheelchair, and then and you're using a Hoya lift. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you were pretty much dependent at this point. Yeah, I had for your breathing. Now, at what point did you go on a vent? Uh, well, they watched my breathing for quite a while because I was stubbornly hesitant uh, about, you know, I didn't want to be a burden to Lisa, but even more though than I was already, it seemed like, even though she'd tell me every day. And, and a lot of pals deal with that. You know, I mean, there's a small percentage of pals that get a, a trach. And I would, I've since been an advocate, choose life. You know, because you never things that are coming down the line, you know, you never know. And if you don't choose life, then you don't get a chance to do that. So we had a, we did a lot of praying and my body capacity was dropping. I went I was put on a mask 24 seven full time. And even though my O2 sats were kind of hanging in, my CO2 started rising. And at that point, uh, we had to make a decision, like they said, within the next couple of months. You need to make a decision whether you need to have a trach. And, you know, if you decide to have one, it's probably better to to not do it on an emergency basis and have a trach done uh, by somebody in emergency, by emergency surgery, have it scheduled and have it done by a professional. So after a lot of praying and then, you know, writing down the positives and negatives, which, you know, I mean, I, 
you know, choose life. I wanted to be able to be with my wife and grandkids and, you know, and, and get, and, and I saw some things beginning to happening then. And I'm like, give myself a chance to even be around. So on, um, in August of 15th of 2015, I, uh, uh, I was trached and uh, it was pretty dramatic. Uh, I didn't realize how bad because at that time I was sleeping before that I was sleeping like 20 to 24 hours a day. And after getting a trach, it was like, wow, a breath of fresh air, a breath of some life. Okay. So the first couple of weeks were, were adapt. We had to adapt to that, but Lisa's she, she was trained and she trained, you know, other family members exactly what to do. And, you know, we had a few, I don't call them crisis, but basically logistical things with getting the right supplies, but she adapted and, uh, wow. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm breathing, you know, and I'm like, wow, my brain is working again. Cause, uh, when you get to a point where you're, you're, that you need a trach, I think you need a family member or somebody there to be with you because your brain is kind of cloudy. Uh, and, Sometimes maybe you can make a bad choice. So that's why I tell people that it's between you, God, and, you know, your significant other and family. You, I think everybody needs to be involved in that. So because thinking that you're a burden, a lot of people thinking you're a burden, once you get a, your caregivers, future caregivers, that's going to take care of you for that. And then have them say, you'll never be a burden. We're going to take care of you is really kind of a relieving thing that letting you know that, okay, I'll go on. And do this, no, because once you get a trach, that's kind of reversing the the natural course of the ALS, and you could live for years with a trach. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of unknowns getting a trach. You know, you're going now. You're just leaving this path of ALS and how you decline and you pass away. Well, you're extending life unnaturally. What the doctors claim, and we even had a pulmonologist that at the time he was a great guy, but he suggests he didn't like. Uh, the trach. So he thought that by changing the trach was changing the natural course of the disease. And, but uh, we didn't listen to him. Thank goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, Lisa, how did you deal with the caregivers? Because you're working all this time, right? Did yeah. you ever stop work? It was a schedule. It was <laughs> that um, you had to schedule to be able to do your schedule. Um, we had to hire someone to come in and help us. She was there, uh, not as much as I was there, but she uh, relieved me and then also relieved Mark's uh, daughters would come in, friends would come and help um, his mom and dad. So it was a, it was a team effort, teamwork. Didn't um, want to put all the burden when Lisa was gone, or even when Lisa was there. I mean, there was times that we had the lady that we used, uh, uh, the young lady that we used, she stayed some time when Lisa was there to try yeah. to help out, take the burden off. And so trying to, she, I don't know how she did it, quite frankly. I was just, at that point, uh, you know, I had, I had banked my voice previous when I could talk. Uh, I had banked my voice and uh, at that point I had to Toby and I was using eye gaze. And so it was just, uh, just amazed at all the things that she would do and kind of frustrated that I couldn't help more. But, <laughs> yeah. And I had to pray to the Lord, let, let that go. And, you know, she reassured me that everything was going to be, I would prepare everything basically before I left because I'd be gone like three days at a time yeah. and have everyone just on that schedule of knowing, okay, you do this, this, and this on a daily basis. And this is when he gets this, this, and this, unless he, you know, was not ready to eat or be pegged to fed or, you know, you kind of, uh, you have the schedule, but you, you have it to where it's flexible also. Because there's times he might be sleeping that we wouldn't, you know, wake him up to do certain things. But then there was times that he really needed certain things to happen, so he had to wake him up. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, ALS, you never know if, if it's a night, a good night of sleep or a bad night. And or whatever no. happens, it would roll over to the next day. So it, it was always one day at a time. But everyone was on board as far as they knew when I left, they went by the schedule. And then when I got back, I took over and I went from there to uh, however long I or whatever needed to be done and processed then until the next round of who else was coming in to take over. I think things got a little bit easier. And maybe Lisa can confirm this when when I went to a kangaroo pump at night and all my feedings were all night. 
So that freed up the day to just do the whatever. The, a little minimum. The more crushing so. of the me- whatever, giving me the water. And it was less bowl of speeding at that point. Yeah. Uh, more just like, you know, they would crush and dissolve and she'd let it set all the medications and she would give me the medicines and the, uh, I say medicines, a lot of the supplements. It was mostly supplements. She, mostly supplements. I would open up the capsules oh. and put them in. Yeah. Um, make a, a huge, like his own uh, medicine ca- uh, supplement cocktail and, you know, liquids and so forth. And so that would be part of the protocol of him getting his supplements and medicines. Yeah. So, uh, so night feeding, I tell people about feedings and they're like, well, we can't get in and we'll talk about this, you know, a little bit more. But when they say, well, I can't get in the, the, this supplement that you want to take. I'm like, well, why, why aren't you on a kangaroo pump or some pump like that? Uh, and then you have your day open to, to, uh, you know, take your, your supplements properly, whether they need to be on an empty stomach or whatever you can, you can eat all night and really you don't get that hungry during the day at all. At least I didn't. Okay. Wow. That's a, that's amazing. So this went on 2014, 2015, 2016. You were pretty much completely dependent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how did you get, were you bored during your days or how were you doing? Cause you couldn't speak at, especially towards the end. You could not, your ability to speak was really limited. Um, you know, uh, this is when, uh, God stepped in big day. And he's always been a part of my life, but he really stepped in this time because I was having anxiety because, uh, you know, I wanted, there's it's like, I can't do, and you can only watch so much TV that I get bored of TV. So I always love music. Uh, we had typically had after that, we had a lot of music playing in the house, relaxing music, smooth jazz. I used to love smooth jazz, even though Lisa and I could control it with, my computer. So, uh, that's typically, you know, our thing is you tip me Oh God, you blow me out because her ears are more sensitive than mine. But that, that helped me, you know, um, you know, music calm me down actually just getting into the music and then, uh, and then listening to the Bible, uh, because they have Bible apps that you can listen to. You know, we went through the whole Bible listening to, uh, you know, the Bible app. And so, those kind of things. And, you know, cause, cause I, you know, I was electrical engineer for, for almost 30 years and I had to shift my thinking really. Cause if I was an analytical thinking, like an engineer, I would have drove myself crazy at that time, thinking about every little thing that could have happened, you know, but I didn't, I shifted to more, uh, and actually did a, a speech. My, my, my cousin was a, I say a speech, the, the machine talk, but I mean, I typed it in to a class at LSU about adaptive thinking and how you have to, uh, you know, in certain situations, you have to change from a, maybe like I was, analytical thinking to a more philosophical and theological thinking. Otherwise, you know, you, you know, you'd go bats, you know, you'd lose your mind. So, um, and that's what happened. I found myself, to anal- I, I did not, I tried not to analyze everything and tried to more of like from a theological standpoint, trying to find peace. And I did. And I also found that my thing then, besides the never surrender, I'm like with, I would tell Lisa with faith, love and hope, we're going to get through this. And wow. she agreed. That's- that's amazing. Um, now, did you help Lisa? Lisa was doing all this nutritional research. Do you help her at all do nutritional research? I do. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. You do. And you that did that as well? A lot of the time was, was Googling things. Yeah. She still does. All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, what now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I would Google this and, you know, yeah, okay. I think, I think we need to add omega-7 to the sea buckhorn, not the fish. You know, she always gave me plant-based stuff because she didn't want to introduce mercury to my diet by eating fish. So, um, so yeah, I and still do. I mean, I, back then, I used, I'd probably spend three or four hours, you know, with the, with the machine Googling things, different things. Yeah, not always nutritional, and I'd humorous things too on YouTube, whatever, just to occupy my time. And, uh, 
but but by doing that, I, we actually found some really, you know, really interesting. And, and, and at that time, uh, that's when I got in touch, touch with Dr. Bedlack, Richard Bedlack. And he actually suggested he was doing a clinical trial or not a trial, a, a study through his ALS Untangled because I had been to Washington. We went to Washington, D.C. as an ALS advocate. And that's where we met Dr. Bedlack for the first time. And, and I sat through some of his seminars and I started Googling a lot and went on to his ALS Untangled. And, and that's where we first started taking the L-Serene starting in 2016 because it was a recommendation from, uh, from Dr. Bedlack. That, so, <clears throat> so yeah. This I guess was a real I, team effort as far as, team research, team effort, as, far as what your protocol was going to be. You both really worked together on it. Yeah, after after her and I talked about it, I actually, we found out where we would get it from a local apothecary that get the pure, uh, uh, the pure El Serene, and Lisa initiated that, and then we had a monthly shipment that came in, and so that was our initial into the, to kind of going away from just the, the sole products and the, the shakes and stuff until, okay, now we're going to try this amino acid that uh, that a doctor has said that you know could possibly help that along with coconut oils and mm-hmm. all kind of different things and uh so yeah we were constantly experimenting and at this point uh because i was traked uh and i wanted to get better i surely didn't you know my whole reason of getting a trach was not to live like this forever that was my hope and prayers and so by us studying together and investigating together we we found that, okay, there's things that we can do and we, we with the L serene and there's, and then my liver enzymes are getting bad. So I got off of Riazol, which they were telling me, no, you should never get off of. Uh, well, it was killing me, killing my liver. I was turning yellow. So um, she started to adapt to everything natural, no pharmaceuticals. And I started feeling a lot better. Okay, and so it, when did you go off your pharmaceuticals? You still take a few pharmaceuticals. I, I, I take, I still take a little baclofen. Yeah. Uh, but there's, there was a long list. A long and list. now yeah, it's maybe. not as long of a list Two. of certain things that yeah. the doctors still have him on and watching and recommend. Yeah. Okay. So you're taking baclofen as a one pharmaceutical. And what's the other one you're still on? Well, I take uh, to sleep at night. I take uh, uh, the, the dissolvable clonazepam. And that helps me sleep. But even though Lisa gives me, uh, what is it? Melatonin, Melatonin and some other things. Uh, rather than, you know, that's the, the thing I, I, I really kind of cling to to try to, because I was not, I kind of got my nights and days mixed up. When you're not, when you're not moving around or not doing anything, you're not, I mean, yeah, I mean, your energy is with vesiculate. At that point, I had no vesiculation muscles anymore or just atrophy. And, and so, uh, I, you know, I was, I would take naps. I didn't know, I got my nights and days mixed up like a baby. But the clonopan, when, when they introduced that, that actually, I could sleep at night and stay, because I could sleep good at night and I wake, I'm more awake during the day. Because uh, Louisiana is not a, uh, and that's where we live, is not a medical marijuana state. Uh, uh, I didn't have that option. We moved to Florida. Uh, things are a bit different. So uh, now I, I take uh, uh, a liquid tincture, Indica, nine pound hammer, and it does just what the name says it does. It knocks me out. So, and I, I sleep fairly well, to, you know, to, without going with all these pharmaceuticals. Okay, so this went on, and then the next thing that you found, so you're continuing to tweak and, <clears throat> you know, play around, but you pretty much, it sounds like you're stable at this point. You've got a trach. You can't speak, you can't eat, you can't move. So not too much changes on the physical level, right? Yeah. You're just kind of sitting there, but you're not able to do anything. Yeah. And, and At what point, what's the next thing that happened? In this well, during story? that time, I think the focus during that time, the PT and OT, they were just trying to keep stretching, keep, keep you know, the atrophy to them. Even though I'm still atrophy, they tried to keep me as, as limber as possible. Splints and all these things to keep my had all these uh, things on my feet to keep my feet from, and my toes from curling. And, 
but I still had a lot of therapy. It seemed like they were there every day. Well, he did, but it was also his doctor recommended it yeah. because a lot of the home health that we have found, uh, they only go to a certain cutoff point, I guess you could say, between their medical reasons of uh, insurances and so forth and ALS uh, definition and so forth. So they had their uh, own way and then we had our own way with his doctors because his doctor says he has ALS and he should still get these and yeah. she even looked it up to know okay we're still gonna write this prescription and they need to come out and give him the therapies and the modalities that he needs if it is just stretching and so forth and so um, our doctor really helped us really well of staying on top of it for us because there was a lot of times I was having to do all these schedules and this one, one common, this one, one common. So she would always step up to the plate too. And she would say, that's my job. I'm going to contact that home health and I'm going to deal with them. You have too much other stuff to do. So I finally got it like, Oh, all right, good. We're, we're rolling here now. Thank you very much. Dr. Hill. She, I mean, she was straight on it. She said, and, and we're going to work with them and they're going to work with us to make sure that, you know, we had, um, not only that, we had an aide that came twice a week, if possible, to help us Scrubbing. with, yeah, decent shower baths and so forth. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of backtracking a little bit. I had this, had this doctor, Dr. Bunny Hill, uh, previous to doctor, and she became an MDVIP or a concierge doctor. And Lisa and I decided, well, after I got ALS, she's like, you know, was diagnosed. She's like, Mark, we're going to stay with Dr. Hill, even though it's costing us $3,600 a year, whatever it was costing us. I don't know. didn't matter because we had her cell phone. She was an advocate. She knew the Medicare handbook. She would copy pages and send it to the health home health saying, this is what it says. It doesn't, I don't care that y'all don't want to maintain a person. Okay. If they kept saying, oh, we can't maintain you as long as you're not improving, we can't maintain you. Well, she copied pages, and so this whole time I had therapy, which I think was a big key to keeping me, you know, keeping me limber and, and stretched. So um, so I, I give kudos, uh, and Lisa does too. She just mentioned, that's why I mentioned her name. She mm -hmm. gives kudos to the doctor who was just, wow, yeah. there every day. So, and she came to our house too, so she, she made house yeah. calls. It, it was well worth it. You know, ALS is a very expensive disease. So to add yeah. another... Uh, addition of cost to us it was uh, mind relief and yeah. that's what we needed I know a lot of people can't afford it and some people can afford that plus some uh, we we did what we could do to make sure and we still do that with we still have a <laughs> yeah with this disease is to us it's necessary some people can't do that but we also see what um, benefits we get out of that uh, her being very proactive for us. A doctor on call for 24 hours. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's get into what turned this around because I'm looking at you now. Obviously, you're no longer on a peg tube. You're obviously walking around okay. now. No, so, no <laughs> yeah, no trach anymore. So uh, okay. tell us what led to the turnaround. I mean, this is the other nice thing is that you, with a peg tube, at least you're getting great nutrition because you're not eating any junk food. That's true. Uh, <laughs> she would not. Well, <laughs> occasionally she would give me a little taste of a hamburger and put it in my Something. mouth and and then she would take it out just so I could get a taste uh when he was pegged to when I was pegged straight, to straight yeah. so but you know, even with that she had to be careful so I wouldn't aspirate <laughs> that but I wanted to taste of something but she wouldn't let me eat of course but you know yeah. and and she occasionally give me a some wine in my peg tube and you know kind of relaxing you know it's good for you, Reversol and the wine. Mm -hmm. I could try to convince her. There's some, I had done my own investigation and look, and Dr. Bedlack was doing a, a study on Reservol, which is in the, the, the leaf of, I mean, on the skin of grapes. And oh, so Resveratrol. Yeah, mm -hmm. re, re, Resveratrol, right. Mm -hmm. So I'm convinced her that, you know, a little bit of wine in my peg every day is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So It wasn't every day. But, but she does. wouldn't do it every day, no. unfortunately. But, yeah. But what we, what took place was when he started the L Serene and within a few months, um, he could tell 
uh, he wouldn't really say a whole lot, but he was like, Lisa, there's things happening. I can't really describe it. Um, so we kind of went a little bit longer and um, then this friend of ours, that's a nurse practitioner, uh, she's always followed Mark's journey. She lost her brother-in-law to ALS and she's always like, okay, what are you trying now? What's going on and how are things? And so we were telling her about the El Serene. And so um, she says, hmm, well, you know, if one amino acid is starting to take place, she said, why not a blend? And we were like, okay, what you got? Uh, because where what she does, she would have clients come in and they would have all this energy and she'd look at their chart and it would be 80 years old and they're anti-aging looking and they've got this energy and she'd say, okay, I want what you're on. And so they t introduced it to her. And so she had it to where she was able to introduce it to us. And she said, uh, if you're taking one amino acid, what about a blend? What about turmeric? She goes, there's this product. It's got B vitamins, B12. It's got all of this, this, That's and this. Problem. And we're like, okay, what you got? We'll try it. So she sent it to us. And, you know, we started out doing uh, once a day, a scoop of it and just trying to stay on track with what was taking place of him taking all of his supplements. Uh, we really didn't know uh, the uh, science behind it, but we didn't care. We were like, okay, let's try this. Well, and so three this, months is later, this is the Leap XX, is this right? Yeah, yeah. She, okay. she's so a nurse practitioner. So Leap we XX when? He started Leap to be fit that comes from Leap XX. Okay, uh, fit. March okay. 2017. 17. Okay. And then, and of course, he's getting PT, OT, and speech in. And, you know, I'm like, okay, within three months, I'm like, okay, how are you going with this? I could swallow better. And That's what I told him. Says, I could swallow. Y'all not having to suction me as much. I could type. Y'all not having to suction me as much. I can feel that I'm able to swallow some of my saliva. And sure enough, they, they were not having to suction right. with the cannula. They weren't having to suction me as much. So, so that was like nine months on the L Serene and then three months that we added. So to, with the leap XX, the leap to be fit. Yeah. And then I would just keep asking him another three months. And in the meantime, he's got his PT helping him with his balance. Um, OT working with his hands. Um, yeah. because with my foot straight. Yeah. In the foot. Yeah. So because I can move my toes, I started moving my toes and they were moving my, they could, I could move my fingers, you know, one and two and then, you know, and then I have some setbacks, but wasn't discouraging. No. Yeah. And then, but that was, his, he had a goal in eight months and we didn't even uh, calculate the, because of him starting these products. He just had a goal because he wanted to see and be there with his daughter to get married and stand mm -hmm. up and do the daddy daughter dance or do something and participate with, the festivities and the celebration and within eight months after him starting uh the leap to be fit and it was a year past with the el serene he was actually able to stand up his uh breathing was better he got off his trait he mm -hmm. took two steps gave his daughter away yeah. we got him back in the chair got the trait the vent back on him and she got married. Basically held my breath, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah, like, it's okay. But my whole goal, and I worked for this for months with my PT, and he even we even attempted to do a dance, but he that wasn't a good idea. But uh, he, he said, him, two guys dance, and he was going to do that with me to even sway a little bit. Just but to but just going. to get a couple of steps, so I could say I walked her down the aisle. Right. And that was a goal. That was a goal in my mind. And I, every day that was, and we worked on that every day. And, and David, you know, if you watch this, man, you're amazing. So, yeah. uh, so he did that. He actually did the, the daughter daddy dance. We got him up again for about a minute to yeah, stand and, and do this way that he had been practicing <laughs> and was, waiting to do. It wasn't a good thing. I fell yeah. back in the chair, but that, that's okay. <laughs> so but, that was, um, the end of 2017 yeah. that we actually, uh, okay, we visualized, okay, things have really come, you know, better in a sense. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, I was still on a trek 24-7. I could get off of it. I basically hold my breath. I mean, really, I wasn't... I mean, if I got off of it more than a couple of minutes, my O2 sat to start dropping. Right. 
So, uh, but hey, I couldn't do that before. I mean, I had no control of that. So that was a positive thing. Uh, I began to start driving my wheelchair, which that was a really great thing. I could drive my wheelchair with my right hand. Uh, and uh, so I became, in, I felt like I was a lot more independent. It was really happy at that point, uh, not knowing what was to come. Uh, you know, I was really like, okay, if this is where I'm at, and I can live like this and be happy. But, but deep in my mind, I'm like, but I think, I think I could go further. I mean, if I've come this far, I can go further. And I prayed about it every night and every day. And Lisa and I prayed together. And, and, then, <clears throat> and then we made a big decision to move to, in December of 2017, to move to Florida, close to our, our friend that's a nurse practitioner. And unbeknown to us, we have actually moved closer to the, the, the factory where, where they made Leap. And uh, we got to, and uh, our nurse practitioner friend introduced us to the, to the, the, the man that formulated the leap. And he was, uh, he quickly corrected the way I was taking leap because I was taking, not only was I not taking enough and I was still improving, but I wasn't like, you know, he said, it's obviously it's great that you're improving, but you're not taking, I think if you take it properly, uh, two scoops a day on an empty stomach, uh, he said, I, I think things will, you know, will help you even more. And so we're like, okay, we're open. Because I had kind of plateaued at that point. I got to a point where I, you know, my daughter's wedding, that was great. That was December the 8th, 2017. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I didn't, I wasn't getting any better after that. But I was, at that point, I was pretty happy because going from being in a vegetative state to that, to me, it was was a real, it was a positive, a great thing. Uh, and and it also, at that time, Dr. Richard Bedlack had started reviewing my case and for the ALS reversal. But he has to review you for a while because short-term ALS reversals are not uncommon, uh, so he says. And so he had started reviewing, reviewing my case at that point. And we moved to Florida. Uh, in December of 2017, and we uh, started taking the, the protocol right, the leap to be fit correctly. Within three months, that plateau. We moved here in December, and we start, he changed it to start taking it in March. March, yes. Uh, with the two scoops. And that was a year after being on it for, with one scoop a day. Yeah. Right. So you took it, not only did you take two scoops instead of one, you also started taking it on an empty stomach. Yes. Correct. Yes. And, and, and waiting a half an hour. So like three hours before and about a half an hour after before. Well, you first it. thing in the morning, this is where, because we hit a lot of pals that call us on the proper way, even though Lisa's written it down and she's actually done a video that we share with pals. Uh, that she shows how to make it and she goes through all the instructions. But if it's first thing in the morning before you eat and you can take the leap and 30 minutes later, you can eat. So it's not like you have to wait a long period of time. Uh, but then as the day goes on, if you eat, let's say at, you know, lunch at one o'clock, you need to wait three hours to four o'clock to take your leap again. And then 30 minutes after is you can eat again. So it's really not, I don't think it's that bad. It's just something that we found that worked for us. That's right. It's not, me telling someone how to do because each person's different, especially with what their challenges are of feeding and medicines and everything for each pal. Yeah. So what worked for us, it's just a guideline of someone to, to make it implement it into their schedule. Yeah. But ours was get up. The first thing I do is I mix the leap up. He gets that 30 minutes later, he's getting his other supplements and his medicine. And then 30 minutes after that, depending on if he's ready for whatever he's going to have, whether it's a shake or food or whatever, mm -hmm. mealtime, if he's hungry or not, okay. And then, you know, in the afternoon, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, if he's eaten by then, I look at the clock. I watch the clock a lot. And then uh, three hours later, I give him another dose of the leap. And then 30 minutes after that, he can have whatever foods or whatever the medicines come later. But if we go all day, we've got doctors, we've got this, we've got that. And he hasn't had leap since early in the morning. And if he ate at five o'clock in the afternoon, just because of what our crazy schedule was that day, 
I look at the clock and it's, it's three hours later still before I give him that second dose of leap. Okay, so if you're really busy, he might not get a second dose till 8 p.m. Right. Yeah, and that's okay. It's work, but it's not like a daily basis that we do that. But some people do. They, they do the morning and they do the night. It's each person's own way through this journey of what works for them. And is that made a scientifically what the scientist explained to you was that it was more absorbable on an empty stomach. Exactly. Well, it's getting that nutrition in uh, on that empty stomach and trying to absorb as much of that nutrition as possible. When right, you eat, because the food will in, kind of interfere with the yeah, absorption. It's like a battle. You've got all this stuff going on in that gut, which already the gut has a bunch of issues anyway. So getting it in on an empty stomach, it makes it a lot better for you know easier i think formally what what the the formulator told me uh what told us was that when you eat proteins your body releases certain enzymes in in your body to digest those enzymes i mean if it's chicken whatever you can you can only absorb certain amino acids if you absorb all the amino acids you start growing feathers like a chicken so your body has to discern which uh amino acid that it wants and which it doesn't so it has to it has to, your body is a really amazing piece of equipment. So it has to discern what you digested, what enzymes it has to put out to, to be able to digest that properly. Well, if you're taking amino acid, the amino acid supplement and your, your, your body chemistry and you've eaten, your body chemistry is different than what it would be on an empty stomach. So it's, it's already having to, you know, issues, okay, well, what, what enzymes do I, what amino acids do I absorb and which ones do I discard? So you end up, if you take the, the, the leap to be fit on a, with food, you end up wasting most of it uh, or, or a portion of it. So by taking on an empty stomach, your body's like, oh, great, this is just amino acids. I know how to do this. Oh, this is human amino acids. It's not chicken or something else, so, or beef, uh, so I can absorb this readily. Okay. That makes sense. So March of 2000 um, of 18 is when you added the second scoop and started taking it around them to stomach. And then uh, you noticed how long did it take before you noticed something? Cause you were in a plateau at that point. It, yes. It, we kind of got an aha moment, I guess you could say, because uh, things started happening. Mark was having some infections. He was going in and out of the hospital. And so uh, in May, he was in the hospital and they always do an assessment. He was in ICU. Um, and then a couple of months later, we went to the same hospital. And of course, the night nurse remembers us because of ICU everything nurse. that we bring with us as far as the wheelchair and you got suctions and you got all this stuff. She remembers us and she was like, OK, you guys, what what are you guys doing? Because she was doing her assessment. And yeah. Mark was helping move around more. Yeah. She was feeling the tone. She said, he's toned. What well, is going on? When you get in ICU, you know, they make you get naked, right? And they do an assessment. And she was comparing in her mind for where I was before and where I am now. She's like, right. what are you doing? You have muscles. You're moving. What are you doing? Right. As sick as he was because he had infections and fevers and all this other, you know, uh, stuff, pseudomonas with, with the trach and all of that going on. <laughs> and that was like a four month period by the second time we were in the hospital that we were like, Oh, okay. Now we really are seeing some sort of other results and it's coming from a nurse. And so that's when we got an aha moment of things starting to look on the better end. Mm -hmm. And then the P and in the meantime, in and out of the hospitals, we still had PT, we still had OT, we still had speech people were still working with him. So they were helping with those muscles to um, tone up more so. They started noticing a difference too. Yeah. Big difference. So They're that like, was wow. mid-summer of 2018. 18. And we just kept doing the same regimen of what we had been doing. You know, life goes on. You just day by day, just keep, um, keep up what you're doing, I guess you could say in, in that sense. And then uh, we had started going to see the ALS clinic, which was a new clinic for us here in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Phil Smith Nero at Holy yes, Cross. Yes, um, and we met up with them. They went over all of Mark's material. They had to gather it and everything. And with 
that was like May we started there and by July we saw them again and they even kind of saw a difference. Major too. And then by September, um, he started doing the, uh, the, it's a strength test with Atlas. the Atlas machine. A-T-L-I-S. And he was one of the first ones to try it out. And they saw a difference even in a few months of what was taking place. And they were, you know, testing his force vital capacity, the Atlas machine, and then so forth. And breathing started getting better. Um, everything, his strength, uh, just throughout all the way to the fall, when they were actually, the neurologist was, saying we need to get this track out uh have y'all thought about that i mean what what are your thoughts on this because his my breathing gotten a lot better a lot better and, and by doing this atlas machine you know a lot of people that would watch this video would know during going to a neurologist they make you push against your hand his hand and it's really subjective as to okay i feel a little bit more strength well they see lots of als patients so this atlas machine actually gives them empirical data on the strength. So it's not like, you know, subjective, somebody holding, holding your, they can see the numbers can rise on a graph. And my uh, force vital capacity uh, was increasing. Uh, there were some issues they checked when they check it with the trach. I mean, it, cause initially it got to a low of eight in uh, August of 2015. And it was like, you know, in the sixties and seventies range going steady, going up. And uh, so uh, they're like, wow, this is, uh, you know, this is amazing. And then he, the doctor was like a little bit skeptical. He even did another EMG to confirm that I did still have, I do still have ALS. And to this day, he did another one recently. I still have uh, ALS, but as he said, you've improved. And so, uh, so we just continued that process for the next, next year. You know, going to the ALS clinic, continuing with the therapies, uh, which I still am doing therapy. I still do therapy twice a week. They don't come to the house anymore. I go to the the, the clinic, the the, re, uh, the clinic, and they have all the the neuro uh, people that work with me uh, on a daily basis, on a uh, twice a week now. It used to be three times a week. It's only twice. But so when did you go off your trick, and when did they remove your feeding tube? Well, the first big thing that happened was me taking steps, you know, going oh. from from out of the wheelchair uh, to to actually walking. You know, uh, first, you know, after my daughter's wedding in seventeen, you know, that was just a couple of steps, but I I I, I still wasn't walking. That was just a shuffle. Uh, but as the as two thousand eighteen progressed and and you know, wow, the therapists are like, are you getting strength? And like, okay, well, they got permission from the doctor. Okay, well, let's just get him up. And they hooked the belt to me and they were holding me up and, you know, put weight on me. And it was, it was difficult at the beginning. Yes. And, uh, uh, but it just kept, we just kept powering through it. And next thing you know, I'm there, I have a walker and there we're outside. We have a, on our condo, we have a, a place where I can walk and they had me walking well, initially it started inside. I'm still hooked to my trach uh, during this time. Right, and you're so still on I, a feeding tube at this point. I was still mm -hmm. on a feeding tube. And again, just to be, I want to make it very clear for anyone who's listening that you, this was not normal feeding tube feeding. You, you first started with Liquid Hope, which is a yeah. completely organic, all-natural product, and yeah. then you moved over to Kate's, uh, Kate's Farm, which, oh. which is also another organic okay. all natural feeding tube supplements yeah. so i think that it's very important to understand that uh this is not your standard feeding tube formula that they give you uh, yeah. that you were using and because they're when i look at those ingredients like three of the first five ingredients are sugar mm -hmm. right so obviously that's not what you were getting no mm -hmm. no okay. and uh so continue to get better better and they're measuring all of this and doctor and then I guess 18 was just a year of getting right because uh, we better. started implementing his swallowing was getting better too because he was working with the speech therapist and we were doing everything to make sure that he wouldn't aspirate too but it's, it, it was he was able to start swallowing again yeah. so he was able to actually start we weren't using the feeding tube as much in 2018 no, he was, was starting to use 
soft foods at first and then would step up, make a little Nictor step Nictor up, Nictor you know. So it was like we went from one way into another wave of that area that he was not doing anything for himself 24 seven. And then we had to transition out of that to being uh, back to the way he was before. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's not completely, like but start. getting there. Yeah. Right? It's to be able to do pretty much restricted. So, you know, let's, I want to skip a little bit, but even when you started the diet and slowly, but surely he's starting to eat more and more real food, even when the feeding tube is there. Uh, was what fun. was his diet? Like, I assume you didn't let him go, go to McDonald's. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> any junk food, right? No, no. But you know, there were some things that I would be. You know, we're from Louisiana, and they got some good food there. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it'd be like I haven't had crawfish in a long time. So I was like, okay, that was my first big meal. Right? <laughs> but so, we're gonna go crawfish. slow with that, you know. And he sounds like he says I sound like a train because I'm always like, and still to this day, chew, chew, chew. That yeah. is my big thing is chew, chew, mm. chew. Because you know, even though a normal person is supposed to do the choo choo choo. It's like, okay, can I finally swallow? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, yeah. I did have a few spells where I aspirated stuff, but by that point, I had uh, more of a cough. Even though we did have a cough assist, I had a cough assist. Fortunately, I was able to get up when I aspirated. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would have been a right. that would have been a, another hurdle to, to go over. But uh, and that's why she said, you know, Marky, because sometimes I was beginning to feel better and I forgot mm -hmm. that. Okay. We've come well, too far. We've come still, too far to go backwards. That's what she would tell yeah. me. We still have to stay in our lane. <laughs> yeah. But so what, tell me what you what you did not eat, uh, and and to this day you still don't eat. Uh. Well, I don't. I I try to stay away. I, I'm. I don't. I try to stay away from dairy products in general. Uh. For one, I don't metab. I found out during this process, I don't metabolize dairy products. Not that I'm allergic to anything. I just don't metabolize them. Uh, that great. Uh, uh, I used to drink Diet Cokes and things that were horrible for you. Well, I haven't had a soda and I can't remember the last time or don't have anything uh, with, with any kind of artificial sweetener. No artificial sweeteners. Um, uh, what's, what's dairy uh, is the huge one. I mean, dairy, dairy is in yeah. so much. I mean, even to the point of, uh, certain things that you cook you yeah. know you you have to substitute to a certain extent instead of you know using a certain oil instead of butter so dairy is a huge one yeah and try as much as i mean you know i'm not always perfect with this but we try to do a gluten free too because yeah. gluten is after i've done my investigation gluten is not good for your body uh so occasionally i will have a a roll <laughs> so but we still know. do protein shakes as far as he does the heel on the meal um and the soul uh complete because it is very good uh for the gut system so i i i for the longest time i did case form even though i could swallow uh because yeah. i like the chocolate case form uh so that was my even though i was even though i was substituting it was a way I could get my chocolate fixed, mm -hmm. but yet with case form. Right. Uh, and I was substituting food, but I was being very trying to, at least as insistent sometime, you know, uh, my food is just not to chew stuff enough. But uh, I substituted food, but I think the majority of my diet for quite a while was the Kate's food. I would drink it, drink yeah. the Kate's food. Yeah, especially when we was transitioning into uh, the way that things are now, yeah. you know, it was baby steps. He was starting right. to be able to walk. He was starting to be able to breathe on his own and, you know, not having to use his peg tube. So there was a lot of starting over things that we had that we didn't get to do for a while. It's amazing. Had to learn how to swallow again because your body, after not using those muscles, uh, those muscles have to be built back up. It's like, uh, it's like they don't know what they just don't know what they're supposed to do. So, mm -hmm. Even the beginning of swallowing was a challenge, uh, but. I'm impressed because you didn't swallow for three years. Mm -hmm. And right. the fact that your body was able to build those muscles back and now you can swallow normally. That's very impressive. At least yeah. to me, I'm like, wow. The same thing with the breathing. breathing the breathing was, was all here. 
So he had to learn how to breathe in his nose and his mouth it again before they would actually take the trach out. I couldn't. For good. Yeah, after I started my vital capacity get up to around 75, they're like, okay, we're going to start doing breathing exercises. Well, my, bo my body's like, no, this is not the way you, can, you breathe. So it's like the air wouldn't come in and out of my nose and mouth, even though my diaphragm was pulling. So they would cap my trach during this time, and, you know, they'd have to take the cap off my trach because I could breathe in and out of my trach really, really good. And, uh, but it was frustrating. Yes, and it took time. And what happens is your soft tissue begins to collapse because the muscles are not being used, and you have a very narrowed airway. So all that took time, and I had to just, you know, you just have to say, hey, it's going to get better, and do the exercises. I did the spirometer and all kind of little tools that they gave me, and I even had a passimere valve. So the passimere valve mm -hmm. allowed me to breathe in and then blow out, up, and that helped open up that area. It was like, okay, now you're going to be breathing the right way. So, um, yeah. and then eventually I got completely, in 2019 was the year, the year we actually met you for the first time. Uh, you know, they're like, okay, now we're working on getting rid of the trach. We're going to get rid of the peg tube. And they got me to that. They worked me to that point, you know, uh, over the, the, I'd say the last quarter or last five months of 2018 yeah. and in the beginning of 19. Right. So, and now we're getting, uh, I had the trach removed in March of 2019. And the peg tooth came out the same day. Same day. March 6th. Both of them. Wow, that's exciting. The, same day. Uh, the peg closed. Unfortunately, the, the trach didn't. Uh, we found out later from our doctor that put it in and he, ALS patients don't normally they don't normally remove their trach, so he had put a permanent trach, and so it would. They had to do surgery to close it up, uh, which was done in May, I think. It was June. May or June. It was a few so months they to like get that appointment. Yeah, it, it took a while because they're like, "Well, it's going to close up. You just had it for a long time. It's going to close up." So, uh, I had to. I was walking around with it capped and breathing normal, but and then when they pulled it. Uh, I just had a bandage, a real tight bandage, so it wouldn't air wouldn't go in and out, but it wouldn't wouldn't close up. So, but in June that year, they finally did do surgery and closed it up. And uh, so everything since then has been fairly, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that it's you know I'm a hundred percent, but I'm like ninety five percent, I think. Uh, Are you I able to walk right now? I'm able to walk. I walk with. I still walk with a walker. Uh, he still has OT, PT, and uh, speech. They have. They, they continue that every day. He still has ALS, so it's just a different part of the journey. That's right. And I, uh, in February of this year, Dr. Richard Bedlack had enough information, and he'd been communicating with uh, uh, Phil Smith Neuroscience Center, which is connected to Mass General Hospital in, in Boston, and he had enough information that he proclaimed me as ALS reversal number 41. February, so, February, February, February of 2019. 19, yeah. yeah. He, he watched me for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. He wanted to, you know, to make sure. And so he said he had enough data to, to say that I'm an official reversal. Right. So. so you're eating protein. You, you said you, you try to eat mostly organic. So you're eating vegetables as well. Yes. Um, and you're, but you're limiting your grains, I take it. How do you, how do you, are, do you, do you limit grains? I eat, yeah, I do limit grains. Well, you have to if you're going to do a gluten-free diet. So, right. uh, you know, she's turned me on to burgers wrapped with lettuce instead of uh, bread, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, you know, I, I, I like bread. And occasionally I do eat a soft roll. I mean, you know, it's, it's not a perfect diet. Things but, happen. <laughs> you know, we get in a situation, we're at a restaurant, and, you know, we order something, and, Oh yeah, okay. It's not perfect. You don't know exactly what you're getting, but uh, in general, I try to. Uh, I drink a lot of cystus tea, a lot of cystus tea, and uh, gallons of it uh, a week, which is antimicrobial, antiviral, antifungal. Uh, the reason for that is because I still have ALS. My immune system is not, and I've gone to an allergist. And they verified that my immune system is still not where it needs to be. And uh, by doing things that I can to boost my immune system, I keep, you know, I've 
I've actually been fairly well over the past, you know, eight months or so. I don't think I've, I've caught anything. Tried to stay away from antibiotics because I, uh, I'd taken so many antibiotics that I got to where even the infectious disease doctor started pulling me off of antibiotics because he said, Mark, you're pretty much getting resistant to everything. So we're going to run out of antibiotics to give you. So Lisa, she's done her, 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 and she's like, okay, how can we give you something that will prevent you from getting uh, infections and viral? And this, this is tea, olive leaf tincture, and some things like that, which, again, the gentleman from Leap to Be Fit, uh, just things that he's recommended. Uh, so, colloidal silver is very good. And then you've done, hey, on colloidal silver, yeah. So you've done your own research. You, yes. You're getting ideas from different places. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that sounds great. And are you still in touch with a naturopath? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a doctor mm-hmm. yesterday. I talked to her yesterday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. she's right on target of any support that we need, any questions. Um, so you have medical practitioners that are helping you. You've got your naturopath, then you've got also your uh, concierge doctor. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, right. And then and our friend that's a nurse practitioner. And your friend that's a nurse practitioner. So that's really helpful right yeah. there. Um, you're using these medical professionals, it sounds like, very wisely. And then, and then you you guys are making your own decisions. You're also doing your own research and bringing things to them. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, the ALS clinic never heard of leap to be fit and didn't understand exactly what was taking place with Mark. And we kept telling them what we were doing. Right. So, are you still um, taking coconut oil? Do what? Are you still taking coconut oil? You um, know, nice. for my blood type, uh, this is from the naturopath. For my blood type, coconut is not really a good thing for, for him. He's type A. Yeah. Okay. And, so, uh, so we kind of look at that also as to what we're intaking also. So we do some of the coconut oil, yes. but not... Uh, not to the magnitude I was doing before. Right. No. Right. And I you're still taking of, omegas. You're yeah. still taking... A lot of your almond milk. Antibiotics, your enzyme, digestive enzymes. So you're taking the leap to be fit plus... You have a very clean diet, plus you're taking supplements. Right. Yes, yes. I, the supplements are very big because, you know, even though we do our best to have a clean diet, these supplements are clean. So to me, that's a part of our diet, um, The especially when sometimes things come our way and we're not able to do the other diet like we should. I mean, we're, we're human. It's natural. Things happen. Uh, yeah, (laughs) we get off track or whatever. Um, but these supplements that we take is, is very important. And it's just part of something that I've implemented to be part of his nutrition diet. Right. And I noticed you take melatonin also. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's and you and you're also adding you're also taking turmeric on top of that and D3. Mm-hmm. So you you've got right. a range of supplements and right. we'll write down in the description in this video yeah. uh, exactly what supplements you're taking so exactly. people know that. Yep. And essential oils are very important too. I mean, it's because of trying to make that mind and body connection. Um and the there there have healing components that are in these essential oils. You know, I can add that during the whole time when I was, I hate to use the word vegetative, but that's pretty much what it was. She would diffuse essential oils and calming. They had a very calming effect uh, for me. Actually one's called calm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's in it, but it's called calm Mm -hmm. had a calming effect. and, And then they had one she used during the day that was a lift that had an uplifting effect. And then they had one at night, or sleeping yeah. effect. So um, it was always a different balance, balance of smells mm-hmm. in our in our in our house. But I think all of that was. I mean, you did ask the question, how did I get through it? I think, oh, that helped too. You, yeah. my factory nerve was still working perfect. So all of that added to you know the the comfort, and, and we still do it. Yeah. I have. Uh, she rubbed some on my neck this morning, actually. Right. Yeah. And water also. You you obviously do not drink tap water. No, no, Mm-mm. no, Do not. it's filtered. All um, waters do a major filtering system in there. So, yeah. and, uh, 
we tried alkali water. That's my next thing that I'm actually, uh, we investigated and maybe putting a, a, a system in our house. And we've done that at the, looking at it through the suggestion of, our, of the, the nurse practitioner mm-hmm. that has an alkali system in her house to maybe go more alkali. And uh, which that's probably our next thing to do. So you're continuing to experiment. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's that's just cool. part of it. It's, it's not, we don't, oh, no, we're not stopping. <laughs> no. no. Fantastic. And Lisa, I assume you've incorporated a lot of these changes as well mm-hmm. to your diet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I've always been one to uh, learn and try to learn, especially in the health way, um, to find the balance for me. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at as far as, uh, you know, you've got all the, uh, the toxins that are out there. So you've got to find something else that's, that's going to balance. And that's what, um, that what keeps me going. <laughs> Yeah. Now, do, you, do you restrict meat at all? Do I what? Restrict meat at all? Or do you try to go more plant-based or you kind of... Um, she doesn't eat a lot of meat. To, yeah, to a certain extent. I'm just, I'm not a favor. It's not a favorite for me to eat meat. I mean, it's not that I'm against it. It's just I could do without it. And how about you, Mark? Uh, meat is a treat for me. I mean, you know, I'm... I grew up as a meat and potato type, you know, like most guys, I guess, uh, uh, at least where I'm from, you know, down mm-hmm. south. Uh, but but I don't eat near about as much meat. I mean, I get it in the proteins I get are through the, um, the amino acids in, in a leap, as well as the, the shakes that Lisa make for me, the, the, uh, the, pea, the pea protein. Uh, the whey protein, again, that's a dairy product. A lot of people can go, oh, I'm eating, drinking protein. Well, if you have any kind of problems with dairy, you better look away from whey protein because that's where it is. It's a dairy product. Mm-hmm. And I was having issues with that, and that's how we found out about the dairy products. But uh, And then try to – I'm also incorporating daily is this – we we found out actually through the Healing ALS. We met the people from, from Healing the Meal. I try to incorporate that into my diet too. And that actually kind of suppresses my appetite somewhat as well as, you know, some really good nutritional value in that. And it's all natural. So it's great. Right. And that's and all organic like. also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and what yes. we like about it is you can add to it because some people are like, Oh, it doesn't have enough uh, calories. Well, it all depends on your diet and what you're looking for. Right. But I mean, if you throw an avocado in there, I mean, that's good fats, but it is also, it can be high in calories. Um, so, you know, bananas, it's other things that you can incorporate in that if you want to, but you don't have to. She doesn't, she doesn't overly do it because then I end up with too much sugar. Yeah. Right. And, but, you know, adding a few things to give, uh, adding uh, extra calories uh, is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. And like- Heal and Emil, by the way, just so that the audience knows, um, it's healandemil.com and they list all of their ingredients. They're all sourced, uh, they're all clean sources and raw and organic. Um, but people can get a 10% discount if they use the Healing ALS code. Yeah, so they even know. Uh, code called Healing ALS, and then uh, anyone who orders that can get a ten percent discount, which is which is great. And they also donate um, to us because we're working on a documentary series, and so that's really very helpful because that is is able to help us do our work as well. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. But it's a, a great product. We met the like I said, we met the owners and a formulator that uh, his wife had ALS yeah. uh, and he wanted, he hated the, what she was getting all of the, the, the nutrition Another that he was, she was, she wasn't getting. And he developed it for his wife that passed away with ALS. And he probably, ex- he probably extended her life for, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for longer. And with, kudos to him for developing this for absolutely. ALS and other people that need this type of product. But um, he's very dedicated and has a big heart to help yeah. others. So before we end this, is there anything that you want to add? Because I'm like really blown away. I'm impressed three years without Mm -hmm. you on a feeding tube. You couldn't move. You couldn't swallow. You couldn't speak. And look at you now. Mm -hmm. Um, So what is your message to people 
uh, that are in your situation, they've got ALS and they're getting worse and worse and maybe they're on that feeding tube and respirator and they can't move at this point. Well, my whole thing is, is simple, right? You, uh, it's, you never lose faith or if you don't have it, uh, you'll find it, believe me. Uh, and you gotta just keep hope and love alive, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, the positive energy that you get from people that, that you love and you share and they share with you, I think it helps the healing process. And then it goes back to the motto for the companies that, that we have. Uh, you can't surrender because we see pals that give up. And once you give up, that's it. Uh, your brain is a very powerful, powerful instrument that, you know, that God gave us. And if, and if you convince yourself that you're going to, that you're going to beat this, even though sometimes I thought I was delusional for even thinking this, but, uh, but if you're going to beat this, then it's amazing what your brain, uh, and brain can do, but by giving up and, and surrendering, it's amazing too how quick you'll go down. And we've seen a lot of pals that have said, you know, I'm, I'm over and within three or four months, that's it. They're gone. And, and it's sad, but, the brain is a very powerful tool. And uh, all yeah. I have to add is the positivity. I mean, there's a lot of um, those mm -hmm. that have given up, but there's also out there the naysayers and the negativity. Yes. And that's one thing that we don't allow. If you have mm -hmm. negativity or if you doubt, uh, don't bring it around us. No. We have to draw off of each other's positivity to be able to survive this and for others to survive this. And so, you know, we try to make the best out of each situation, no matter what, as much as we can. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the friends we had with the, with the negative aspects, uh, you know, we still love them, but that's not people that are part of our life. Cause we have to have, cause if you have negative in your life, then it's hard for you to be really positive and stay positive. So we've made a whole lot of new friends that are very positive and that think like we do. And I think that's a big part of healing too, is, is being positive. You know what I mean? And drawing off of those drawing off that ones. energy. Mark's got a real good friend and you know, Mark knows when his brain is not really where it, he knows he needs to be. All he has to do is text this one person. And next thing you know, he's got stuff coming at him. And it is like a whole different attitude. And, wow. you know, and read each other's mind. So, and, uh, and this is one of my old friends that he's always been positive and now he's even more positive. Mm -hmm. So, cause he's going through things in his life that we've helping, we're helping each other. Right. And so, uh, I think that's been a big key aspect. I mean, you look at all of it and it's not just, uh, you know, what we've done nutritionally and all that, but it's a, it's a mindset, you know, that you have to get into that. You have to just say, Hey, we're going to beat this. Yeah. And you have to keep the hope alive and just keep fighting. Cause when you give up, that's it. <laughs> Fortunately. All right. Thank you so much. Now your story is that is, is it never surrender.com? What is exactly, what is your website? Do you have a website? So we have the, the Manchester project with us, which, uh, uh, manchesterproject.org uh, and that's our website uh, and if anyone is uh, wanting to uh, read more information about the supplements that Mark takes they can contact me um, or text me or uh, I don't mind sharing that's what we're about um, and then if they're uh, do decide on you know taking some of the supplements that Mark takes like the Leap XX, there is a, a discount code there also that they can use, uh, Mark Man, and it's all lowercase. Um, and it's the only two products through this company that um, he takes off of there of Leap XX. It's the Leap to be fit and the L Serene. So we right. do want and others. The, uh, Leap also, you take, um, you take the Soul Naturals. Where do they get that? How do they find that? Um, it's one soul.com backslash, uh, natural revitalization. Um, or they can contact me at, um, natural revitalization at gmail.com if they want more information or if they want, you know, Mark's protocol of what he takes. Yeah. Fantastic. And Thanks. other things, you know, just we're here. 
Yeah, we really appreciate you. I'm I'm so impressed and and uh, one of the things that we, you know, we've actually interviewed over 20 people who have reversed ALS. And one of the things that impresses us is that you guys are always willing to share what you've done with other pals. There's no guarantee. Everyone has to find their own answers, but you willing to share what you've done. Um, and then they go to other people, see what they've done. And our hope is that we'll have more and more and more ALS reversals. Well, I mean, I, I think and feel, uh, I call it all of the above besides leap, you know, the nutrition or whatever, all of the above, your faith. Uh, if, if, if that, if I didn't have that, all of the above, that the leap would not be the thing that have reversed my LS. You had to have, it's, it's a whole combination. You know, right. it's, you it's the that. other supplements that you're taking is sure. the diet to take care of your gut and your nutrition, it's the faith, the it's the positive attitude. Absolutely. Yeah. And sticking with the program. The essential and, oils and yeah, sticking everything. with it. Right, right. And your faith. Right, right. Lord, Lord is, I mean, you know, faith that you're going to get through this, you know. That, day, one day at a time. But, and that's, you know, sticking with it and, and doing the best you can and not giving up. Right. Because, um, you know, if, and, and I was pretty much so the one on that spot of saying, uh, we got your medicine. We got to do this. We got to do that. If, if I would have skipped, I would have been right back on it, but I wouldn't skip. You know, mm. it was, it was always, you know, and I know Mark got tired of hearing me. Have we done medicine yet? Okay. We got to do that That's now okay. before we can do something else. It's kind of like get your homework done before you can go out and play. She was vigilant. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay though yeah, that's okay. And, uh, with, and, with ALS you need to be vigilant and, and that's the bottom right. line yeah. people don't realize you know yes you can cheat a tiny bit but if you cheat too much that's right. it's not it's going to be counterproductive right. and you're not it's going to prevent you from or, people, or if you don't take your supplements um, that, right. you know it, your, what is your how is your body going to work without them is the way I look at it that's me but um I, I've seen results of taking those supplements. So, um, and, you know, doing the best we can on a daily basis. That's right. Yeah. To, there's some days to we finish, can. to finish this segment. I talked to a lot of people and I'm like, okay, you can tape. And we've talked about all the things above, right? All the other stuff. I'm like, you can take leap to be fit, but if you're not doing all the rest of the stuff, then I just, I can't see, I mean, maybe it is, maybe it's God will that you're going to have pers per positive results. But if you're not going the extra mile to do all this other stuff, I just can't see how I just say this one product is going to help you. Right. Cause you have to continue and it has to be a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then if you're not willing to go that extra, hold oh, I'm, I'm not going to just say a mile, a million miles. If you're not extra, extra going that, then, you know, this is probably not the path you want to take. And that's probably what you're talking about is people before we gift, you know, you can yeah. cut this out later, but mm -hmm. before we gift, we need to make sure that these people are willing to go the extra mile. Yeah. We will gift you, but Hey, you gotta be, you gotta be all on board on, mm -hmm. on everything on yeah. life. You can't yeah. just expect to eat like a, you know, horrible and live and go smoke, drink, do whatever you got to do. And then, take a little leap and it's going to make you feel good in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. It's, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, commitment. It's just part of life. And it's a, it's a treatment, not a cure. Right. So you not only take the leap, this is, this is one supplement, but you have a whole foundation of supplements right. that you take mm -hmm. and none of the supplements that you take, um, really cure or treat anything what they do it sounds like is that they balance the body and Absolutely. help the body they get rid of vitamin and mineral deficiencies and they help balance the body so the body can then heal itself is that that's right. more correct yes that's more correct absolutely yeah. that's correct we've been able to find things that it works for us him with als or just you know um making it every day with supplements as well as the other um, modalities with PT, OT, um, the nutrition part of feed, the foods and so forth. Yeah, I mean, 
PT and OT, I'd say, is a huge PT, OT, and all that is a been a huge factor in all this because the PT and OTs that we had were specifically people that dealt with ALS patients. And so they knew exactly what to do. I mean, you couldn't, I had a couple of, I'm not going to say they were bad PTs, but they just didn't know. No. They, they weren't, they weren't trained. So the last PT I had, she had four other ALS patients. Mm -hmm. So, and so she knew exactly what and what I, and she watched my legs and they start vesiculating. She's like, Oh, time to quit. All that kind of stuff where, you know, she was, again, she was a neuro. There's a difference between a regular, you know, PT that maybe does somebody that has a hip replacement, knee replacement, you know, some kind of injury or somebody that's dealing with somebody with a neuro, a neuromuscular disease. Right. So good. I mean, that's, to me, that's, that's really important. It's, it's really everything together um, yeah. to heal the body, to give the body what it needs uh, right. to heal. And you've been able to reverse your ALS because of that, which is mm -hmm. amazing. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So God is good. God is good. And faith has made a big difference. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes. We just got through watching uh, our pastor's sermon again on TV. Yes. He, they record it, and we watch it. And again, in case we miss something that he said today, but, and then, you know, daily prayer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Uh, and, and praying, I find, I, my pastor had to tell me, you know, Mark, you don't, He's like, do you pray for yourself? I'm like, not really. I figure God knows what I want. He's like, not always. You need to pray for yourself. I said, I pray for my other pals and my other friends and people and this. Pals and, and cows. Pals and cows. And he said, no, no, you, it's okay. You can pray for yourself too. It's not being selfish. Uh, you know, so I had to learn that too because I never would pray for myself. Uh, I just would figure out, he, God knows what I want. I pray for other people. Mm -hmm. But he changed my mindset on that. So we have a. A great spiritual support system too. Yes, our neighbors. Prayer. God has put these wonderful neighbors next to us. Mm -hmm. That Lord, what a blessing! Mm -hmm. uh, and when Lisa goes uh, from here, even when I when she goes on trips, we didn't even need a caregiver here when I was still not doing good because they're right there next to our neighbors. They were here all the time. I'm like, you so I can whatever. <laughs> they would take turns. Whether it's bringing a dog out or she's feeding me or whatever, whatever needs to be done. I mean, it's like they figured it was part of their, their journey. They're like, God put you on our life because all our kids are grown and, you know, they're not y'all's age, but they're all grown and grown. And, and, uh, and, you know, we look at y'all as like, almost like our kids, you know, <laughs> the power yeah. of prayer is huge. It's huge. Absolutely. It's, don't ever hesitate. I've learned to, um, it's okay to ask for help yes. and it's okay to ask others to pray for you. Yes. It, that's huge. Yeah. Mark is like, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting my uh, prayer chain going here. Mm -hmm. I got to get my prayer warriors on this. There's nothing wrong with that. And asking for help is huge, especially as a caregiver, because your, uh, your mindset is go and do, go and do, 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 do. You don't think about, okay, uh, can you come and help me do this? Or how about this part? Mm -hmm. And if it is part of the prayer, yes, but it Asking is physically help. having them come and, and ac accepting their help because so, yeah. so um, just start out slow um, and just add to whatever you're building on for it to work for each one. I could probably show you 150 videos that we've gotten from pals all over the world. Uh, the one that's most impressive to me is this, this dentist in Italy. Uh, well, he's well off and he wasn't too advanced yet, but he was having, he couldn't, he was having trouble walking and issues like that. And, uh, his hands, uh, over this past, and he's been taking a leap now for over a year and guess he did what you did all day. He went snow skiing. And he skied. March last year he started. March last March year, almost a year. year. Yeah, not even quite a year. And then he's, he's he went and snow skiing. To ski that's fantastic. I'm like, wow. dude, I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't advanced, as advanced. Right. Okay, but still. So when somebody if when he posts more about leap than I think anybody does, yeah. but uh, the French, the Italians, uh, there's some countries that leap 
is not allowed in because of tariffs and goofy stuff. Mm -hmm. So they got pe we've got people that go in a, that are flying here, go to South Africa and distribute it to the pals in South Africa. And we've got one guy that's not been breathing is Dion. I mean, I get pictures from his wife. He's been on a trike for eight years. He hasn't ALS been able to ALS for 15. He's now they're They're showing his, his vent. He's not, you know how it comes up when you start a breath, it shows a little silver dollar like thing that you're yeah. not, you trigger the breath. He does it sometimes for about an hour. He triggers the breast and he hasn't wow. done it in years. So his wife is screaming in the background, Bernice is something. And, uh, <laughs> But I mean, I can get example after example, all of these people that are just, and does it work for everyone? No, but after getting the, getting the survey back is, I think most of it is like, cause people are just not taking it right. Or yeah. they're just not doing just due diligence, you know, or you got to commit having, to it. And having that, the faith to keep going and having, okay, uh, I've got to fight this and keep moving with it. I mean, I get, I get it didn't WhatsApp. Happen night for us. No, I get WhatsApp. People taking it two weeks, and they're like, oh, "I'm getting so frustrated because this is not working." Yeah, I'm like, "Really?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you tell people? Right. That? I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, hey. six months. I, you know, it's interesting because we spoke to Stephen Shacklin. He said, "You know, minimum of four months, more like six months." I give everything six months to really see if it's working because right. it's all natural. You have an all natural product, right. and if you're very deficient in something, until exactly. that deficiency is corrected, you're not going to feel anything. And right. the more deficient you are, the longer it's going to take to correct. Right. That's right. That's, That's exactly it. it. This so. takes time. Uh, Mark, what was your lowest weight? Uh, lowest weight uh, was 170, 175. Um, I was six foot two, so uh, even though I'm shorter now a little bit. But now I'm, uh, you know, 50 pounds heavier, so I lost like 50 pounds. I'm kind of at my somewhat ideal weight now, I guess. Uh, but during the initial, uh, the first year, I lost 50 pounds. Uh, and thanks to Lisa, she stopped it. Or it would have continued with her, you know, nutritional protocol and upping my calories to three, four thousand, whatever she upped it to. It was a lot. Uh, and then having the the peg, when I went on the peg, uh, that's when my re my weight really rebounded because uh, I was getting the right nutrition. So, thank you. Mm, thank you. It's been great. Never surrender. God bless. And oh, hey, yeah. healing and your healing is a uh, wonderful organization. Yes. So we thank you. We thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Good night. Good night.